If you haven't seen my full debate breakdown, then go watch that. I talked through a lot of the issues that I had with the moderators of this debate. A lot of the questions were framed in a very right-wing way. And when we finally got to the healthcare portion, that was no different. So I want to give you an example of the way that the healthcare portion got kicked off. Uh, Bernie Sanders was basically asked if, you know, he were elected, would he be a real leader and compromise in the event Medicare for All is rejected by Congress? Take a look. Senator Sanders, you've spent plenty of time discussing and defending the merits of your Medicare for All plan, but the reality is that if Republicans retain control of the U.S. Senate, or even if Democrats win back a narrow Senate majority, your plan as constituted probably would not have the votes to pass Congress. So the question, Senator, is if Congress rejects your plan, and the American people are looking to you for leadership on this issue, are there smaller, specific measures that you would take immediately to expand coverage and decrease costs as president? So Bernie, how quickly will you roll over and die once Medicare for All inevitably fails? Great question, thank you so much. Um, not biased at all. That was so infuriating to see because the underlying assumption in that question was, Medicare for all is definitely going to fail. Now, nobody is under the impression that that will be an easy fight, but there's not even an inkling of, you know, what's your strategy to get it implemented? How do you plan to convince Congress? It's just, once it fails, then are you going to compromise or are you going to be like Donald Trump and throw a temper tantrum? That's, I think, essentially what he was getting at. But the way that Bernie Sanders handled that was phenomenal because he made it very clear that he's going to plant his feet firmly in the ground and he's not going to budge. And what I love about Bernie Sanders is his strategy is just not like any other politician. It's not a regular legislative strategy where you implement a policy or you tell Congress to pass a policy and then maybe it wins, maybe it fails, but after that you wash your hands. No, Bernie Sanders is going to fight for it because he has a movement who is going to put pressure on Congress if they don't actually acquiesce. So this was Bernie's response. Well, Tim, at a time when we're spending twice as much per capita on health care as any other nation, when 87 million people are uninsured or underinsured, when 30,000 people are dying each year because they don't get to a doctor when they should, and when a half a million people are going bankrupt because of the dysfunctional and cruel system that we currently have, you know what? I think we will pass a Medicare for all single payer system, and I will introduce that legislation in my first week in office. Now to answer your question, I think when we go out to the American people and tell them that right now, we have got to take on the greed and corruption of the pharmaceutical industry, for example, which in some cases charges us 10 times more for the same exact drug as is charged in this country. When the American people understand that Medicare for All expands Medicare to cover home health care, dental care, eyeglasses, and hearing aids, and does it at a cost far, far lower than what some of my opponents are talking about. You know what? We're going to have the American people behind us. We will have Congress behind us. Thank you, Senator. In other words, I have a movement. Nobody else in Congress has a movement like me. So if they don't want to pass Medicare for All, my movement will make them pass Medicare for All. Otherwise, they get to deal with us occupying their offices and flooding their phones with calls. Uh, I just... I don't understand why this question is only asked to Bernie Sanders. You have Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg and I believe Amy Klobuchar who proposed public options. Is that really going to be any easier? The Affordable Care Act was not, you know, something that was a bipartisan bill. It got zero Republican votes. So it's only Medicare for all that is going to be the hardest to pass. And I admit it will be hard to pass. But why is it? that Bernie Sanders only gets these types of questions. It's incredibly frustrating, but Bernie did handle that well. Now, moving on to the portion of the healthcare discussion where there was this exchange between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. Joe Biden, he just, he gets so angry at the prospect of everyone having healthcare. 
And it's really, it's odd to me, right? You'd think that he'd at least be somewhat sympathetic or pay lip service to the idea that Medicare for All is an aspirational goal, but he just shits on it. And during this debate, he tried to obfuscate about Bernie's plan and make it seem like this would make working class people worse off. But Bernie Sanders thankfully jumped in, corrected the record, and he made it very clear. Look, taxes will go up, but overall you save money because we eliminate copays, premiums, and deductibles. And that's something that corporate Democrats like Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg, they know, but they're being disingenuous because they take money from the health insurance industry. I wish that Bernie would have pointed that out. Nonetheless, um, take a look. Tell me, you're going to add 84% more and there's not going to be higher taxes? At least before he was honest about it. Oh, Joe. It's going to increase personal taxes. They're going to be... That's many- right. We are going to increase personal taxes. Okay. But we're eliminating premiums. We're eliminating co-payments, we're eliminating deductibles, we're eliminating all out-of-pocket expenses, and no family in America will spend more than $200 a year on prescription okay. drugs. Okay. Senator Klobuchar, Klobuchar. Our, plan our plan will save right the average right work of four more. Okay. Okay. Senator Klobuchar, we'd like, like to hear from, like to hear from you. Okay. Yes, so Senator Klobuchar, pay premiums or guys, co-payments. Hey. <laughs> First time I did uh, this. Okay. I really hate Amy Klobuchar. <laughs> I mean, that is one of many moments where she interjected and she said nothing. Like, she made it seem like she had something just so profound to say. You added nothing to that conversation, but out. You don't have a real proposal. You don't. You added nothing. Now, you didn't see that, uh, see it in that clip. But Joe Biden, there was a moment where he was talking and Bernie had raised his hand, I guess. And Joe Biden condescendingly said, put your hand down, Bernie. Really? Now, in my full debate breakdown... I noted that that would probably help him because voters like someone who appears strong. But when I see that, just on a personal level, go fuck yourself, Joe. Go fuck yourself, you goddamn stooge, because you have a bill that would leave millions of people out. And we know that you don't support Medicare for all because you are bankrolled by the industry. So go fuck yourself. It's disgusting. Like, he is rich, so he will never, ever have to worry about healthcare. So it's easy to be dismissive, right? It's easy to not actually take the issue of Medicare for all seriously. But that's one thing, to be smug and condescending and argumentative to the point where you're telling someone to, you know, put your hand down. What are you, a teacher? Fuck off, Joe. How about that? Go fuck yourself. That made me incredibly angry if you couldn't already tell now um moving on bernie sanders he set the record straight after amy made her idiotic point she basically said oh well you have to fight governors or convince them she made a point that wasn't necessary to you know see here it it was it was not a point um but i want to get straight to bernie sanders who then turns everyone's attention to the real enemy the real enemy is the health industry not congress not governments it's the healthcare industry My fight, Amy, is not with the governor of Kentucky. My fight and all of our fights must be with the greed and corruption of the pharmaceutical industry, with the greed and corruption of the insurance industry. These guys last year made $100 billion in profit, and tens of millions of Americans cannot afford to go to a doctor tonight. And that is what it comes down to. Simply put, anyone who is against Medicare for All is doing so because they are bought and paid for by the healthcare industry. They may propose a public option now, but they're taking that money and understand they will water that down like that the minute they get elected. We already saw this before. Obama ran on a public option and he didn't even try to get that passed. They had a super majority. We couldn't even get a fucking public option. So um, these stooges are against Medicare for all because they're stooges. That's really the easiest explanation. Occam's razor, right? We don't have to try to pretend like Joe Biden has some nuanced opinion about healthcare or the cost and the deficit. No, you're a shill. Every other modern industrialized country has some form of universal healthcare where it's free at the point of service, be it a national health system or a single payer. You're a fucking shill. That's that. So overall, um, you know, these people who are taking money from the industry, it really shouldn't be lost on anyone that they are using health industry talking points. For people like Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden to champion choice, 
a week after Wendell Potter, a former health executive turned whistleblower, said that he helped create that to mislead people because he knows that there's less choice in the private system and more choice in Medicare for All. I mean, it just goes to show you that they're shameless. They are absolutely shameless. And I think that overall, Bernie Sanders did get the better of that exchange. And he proved to people by making a simple point. Look, these health insurance uh, providers, they're the ones that we have to take on. Now, why I think that's going to land more with the American people is because we have to deal with these health insurance providers. Who likes Aetna? Who likes Blue Cross Blue Shield? Are you going to find someone who's enthusiastic about their health care provider? Of course not. They're going to tell you it's too expensive. It's a pain in the ass. You have to wait on the phone for hours if you need something. You're fighting with them to cover something. I mean, come on. This is something that you're not going to be able to mislead the American people on as easily as other issues. You still can, but nonetheless, you can't mislead them as easily because they have firsthand experience here. Now, you can fear monger because Medicare for all would be something that's new and voters are, you know, averse to change. They don't like it as much. But to try to convince them that, you know, these health insurance companies are somehow benevolent is not the right approach. And for Bernie to call them out directly is important. They're the enemy. Bernie's the only one who gets this.